Hey, welcome in. Good morning to you. This is five on your feed. I'm Ryan Dean and I'm Ali Corey in for Sydney Stallworth this morning. Unfortunately, we have a tough story to start with this morning and we have been following this all week, learning more about the pontoon Beach police officer who was shot and killed. Yeah, I've been following this all week and I got to tell you, the more we learn about Officer Timmons, you know, it's the more heartbreaking this story really is. So let's start with this, uh, you know, uh, details about the man who's charged with Tyler Timmons murder. This is Scott Hyden. He's 31 years old from Highland. He has previous charges for guns and drugs and has spent time in federal prison. Police say Hyden was wanted for not showing up to court on drugs and forgery charges when Officer Timmons walked up to him in a suspected stolen car at a gas station on Tuesday. Authorities say Hyden shot the officer without provocation as Officer Timmons approached the Now, Officer Timmons leaves behind a wife and daughter. There is a growing memorial outside the police department with bunting and flowers. Uh, we've seen several people just walk up and lay something mm -hmm. on top of this pontoon beach squad car. I was out there this morning. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. it's just a beautiful, heartbreakingly beautiful sight. And people who knew him, you know, they called him a very selfless man. Mm -hmm. I think 31 years old. Yeah. Well, he's thir nah, He's 36. The suspect is 31. Okay. Yeah. The officer's 36, and I think. Um, you know, one thing that the chief said yesterday at a news mm -hmm. conference, he said, I think that um, one of the things the officer would want you to know that he didn't die in vain, basically. He died yeah. doing what he loved to do. Mm. And so now we're it's waiting for the, uh, the hearing for the suspect who's been charged in this case. And so we'll be following this very closely. Obviously. And his wife was also a police officer. Yeah, yeah, she is a police She's officer, a police yeah, officer. Yeah, in the Metro East. Mm -hmm. She is. And, and they, they have a daughter. Uh, yes, he has a daughter. He, he just got recently married about a month ago, too. Okay. He's a newlywed. We're learning more about that. The family did release a statement. We're going to try to get that. On, I think we have that online for you now. So mm. um, It's but, just so heartbreaking. Oh, it's just terrible. You know, it, it, yeah. ju it kind of reminds me of, you know, Blake Schneider. Mm -hmm. He just walked out of his patrol car, South County. And that was when he was shot and killed. It, and I remember it, that morning mm -hmm. vividly. I mean, yeah. anytime we hear about an officer injured um, on scene, it's just mm -hmm. you immediately get this feeling of, oh my goodness, I really mm -hmm. hope that they're okay. But um, you know, they put their themselves mm -hmm. at risk every single day. And you know, families of police officers say you always want to hug and kiss goodbye because you never know if that'll be yeah. the last time. Um, but it, it's just so heart wrenching when it happens. One of the great organizations that we have in this area is called Backstoppers and it's helping the Timmons family and we have a link to donate on our website. You can get the link directly when you text Backstoppers to 314-425-5355. And again, this is a wonderful organization. Oh, it is. It, they do great work. All right, the other big story this morning, Stan Kroenke has a lot of you talking in St. Louis. He's going back on a promise that he made to the NFL years ago that he would pay tens of millions in legal fees tied to the Rams departure from St. Louis. Now, according to ESPN, there was a meeting in New York on Tuesday with NFL owners where Kroenke said he doesn't think he should have to pay. And apparently it got so heated that NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell asked Kroenke to leave the room. So we caught up with a legal analyst, Daniel Wallach, who says Kroenke actually agreed to those legal fees in Houston some six years ago. And if he hadn't agreed, well, the owners would never have voted in favor of moving the Rams out of St. Louis in the first place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, this latest feud between Stan and the NFL, it could only boost St. Louis's claims. It's interesting because um, that legal analyst, Daniel Wallach, said, I don't think that Stan ever thought that this would cost him as much money as it has. Sure. And he's saying that it could end up amounting to almost half of his fortune, if not more. Well, I guess, so the sticking point here is if, if it's exclusively his money that he has to pay right. for all the legal fees. Now, I'm not defending Stan at all, but what I've Be careful, heard, Ryan. I know, but what I've heard, <laughs> uh, you know, the other side of it is that, like, the NFL would have never gotten a team in Los Angeles if it wasn't for his deep pockets. Like, he privately funded the whole stadium. Right. And so the argument is why the other owner should also pony up right. is that they are making buka bucks 
right. off a team now being in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. The NFL Network has a, has their has their headquarters there, their LA West Wing quarters there in his stadium that he built. Again, I'm not defending Stan at all, but I'm saying right. But you're saying I, if he's having to you know pay all this money, it was a team decision. Why and a he's arguing? Decision. He's like it might be my yeah. team, but everybody here has benefited has from yeah. me leaving. So. Um, but it's it's just, interesting. It's a delicious story. It, just it is quite <laughs> delicious. And speaking of delicious, Joyous Deli even tweeted about it, and it is quite hysterical. They tweeted saying, quote, can we make a sandwich named the Cronky and it's just full of bologna? <laughs> <laughs> Very well uh, done there. That is good. It would be good, especially if they toasted it, you know, maybe put a little mayo on it. Yeah. Anyways, do you think Stan Kroenke should have to pay up? We know that you probably have a lot of opinions mm -hmm. about this, so go ahead and weigh in. You can let us know in the comments if you're on Facebook, or you can subscribe to this and just let us know. You know, people get pretty heated about this because, look, it's a big deal. Yeah. What yeah. happened? And the rumor is that, you know, maybe maybe they offer us an expansion team because... That has been the rumor. Do you think that that's possible? Yeah, I do. If they're talking $5 billion plus, because remember, this may have the potential for punitive damages. So that's where it gets like, the, when you hear really? those figures, like yeah. 5 to $10 billion, where Daniel Wallach is talking right. about, where if they can turn around and say, okay, let's give you a expansion team because they make money off giving us an expansion team right, right. the owners don't mm -hmm. pay right. they make money off another team I so, would be happy with that oh uh, yeah I think so uh, but some folks are just so scarred by it. they're like you know what I there's nothing you can do here but yeah mm -hmm. as, as Frank Cusimano famously said once you're either you you're either an NFL city or you're not yeah. so you know if they have a chance to be an Apple city again I think a lot of people would say yeah let's do it yeah we'll okay so in just a little over 24 hours, Mizzou is lifting a suspension against all fraternities on campus, but that doesn't include Phi Gamma Delta or Fiji. Now, Mizzou withdrew recognition of Fiji after a freshman member was hospitalized with an alcohol poisoning last week. He's still listed, by the way, in critical condition. Mm. Now, this topic isn't the only one of the top stories on our Facebook page that's trending across the country. Is President Biden responsible for the recent increase in gas prices? We've all seen them. Well, our Verify team looked into it and found no. The president is not the main reason behind the price hike. Rather, high demand and low supply. We've heard that before, right? A AAA official says OPEC has not increased production to pre-pandemic levels, even though travel is picking back up. Add in the supply chain issues and demand is up around the world, which of course just makes the problem worse. So we're going to keep on paying up at the pump. Anytime there's a problem, just yell, supply chain. <laughs> Everything. Even it. when you're in a fight with oh, your wife. Oh, supply, supply chain. chain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grumpy today. That's supply chain. Okay, this has a lot of people from North County upset. The only grocery store in Pagedale, Save a Lot, on Page, is closing for good on November 6th. That means the nearest grocery store will be in University City. That's about three miles away. The store's employees, by the way, will be offered positions at other store locations. Mm. A lot of times you hear about food deserts, and that's the worry here, right? Because it's mm -hmm. in a food desert. You have folks, uh, is some folks in that area who rely either they're walking or public transportation, mm -hmm. and that's the worry. And I know it says, oh, three miles, but three miles when you're trying to rely on public transportation, that's a lot. And if you're bringing groceries back? Yeah. Because I used to live downtown here, and I would just go around the corner to Culinaria, right. and it was a couple blocks. But when you're walking back with bags of, you know, milk yeah. and heavy things, I mean, that's not easy. And, and when I saw this story this morning, I mean, it's heartbreaking because, yeah. you know, they worked so hard to get that store there, and so to see it close is just... Yeah, I guess they raised like $6 million yes. to get the store there in the first place. So right. it has a lot mm -hmm. of folks just uh, reading and, and um, talking this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, here's some good news happening out of North County. A nonprofit is transforming a vacant shopping center, formerly known as Springwood Plaza. This place has been vacant since the Schnooks closed 15 years ago. This is on West Florissant in Delwood. Our Alex Fees actually covered the groundbreaking there last week, but the story's still trending on our website this morning. Now, this project projects expected to cost $16 million. Refuge and Restoration, or r and &R, is behind the construction. It's supposed to have an early childhood learning center, banking, work, banking, workforce development, but the biggest space is going to be a multiplex that houses a church and tenants that include health clinics. That's great. Partial opening is expected by mid-2020.
22. Oh, well, that's great news. That is wonderful news. And you want some more good news, Ryan? Yeah, I love good Here news. Here it is. I know you're going to like this, too, because it has to do with beer. Ooh. Good news. Coming out of South St. Louis, a Dogtown brewer is eyeing expansion into mm. the area. Supply we're, chain. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about Heavy Rift Brewing Company. They want to build a facility mm. on Filer and St. Louis's Northampton right. neighborhood there. The new property will employ 50 full-time workers. It'll cost about $4.2 million. No word on when that will open, but um, it's exciting. It's always nice to see expansions. That means that yes. a company's doing well. That is, you know, I think beer does <laughs> well. Always thrives. And I think it's done even better it's, during the yes, pandemic. Yes. All right. So I wouldn't have guessed this is our top story, but it is our top story. Listen to this. Our top okay. story this morning yep. on our website has to do with a special visitor coming to St. Louis next week. Do you know who it is? It is a big deal. I do, because I see it in the prompter, but it is a big deal. Lester Holt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's anchoring nightly news from five different cities, and that includes St. Louis. He's taking the pulse of Americans on the highs and the lows as they're facing almost two years of this global pandemic supply chain, as well as speaking to people who are making a difference in their communities. He'll be in Austin, Texas on Monday, and then St. Louis on Tuesday. He'll round out the week in Washington, D.C., uh, Nashville, and then Phoenix. So awesome that is exciting that he's coming to st louis it's, uh you know we see the ratings obviously you know tv ratings st louis really loves nightly news mm -hmm. with lester holt so i'm guessing that's probably one of the reasons he's coming here because it's a well-watched show here in st louis it makes sense and so you know obviously the first question is well where is he going to be mm. because i've seen some of these across america uh shows before and he usually has crowds of people behind him okay. you know um so stay tuned i don't know if we're allowed to reveal any information on that but you got you, you got details? Maybe? Uh, no, I don't. Oh, all right. We're well. not allowed to say. Oh. It's a secret. <laughs> all right, well, we're, we're going to talk to the weather, right? Oh, Anthony? yeah. It's raining. Yes. Weather. Good Thursday morning. We are waking up with showers across the area this morning. Area of low pressure to our south, right across southwestern Missouri. That's going to kick up the rain and the wind for today and tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow turns even more gusty. Those winds topping 35, maybe even 40 miles per hour. As we get into the weekend, dry weather set to return, and that gets us into Halloween. Numbers will be up near 62 for the daytime hours, falling into the 50s for the trick-or-treaters with overnight lows on Sunday back into the 40s. Many thanks. Well, this next story is going to make you want to look into a child lock on your cell phone if you yeah. don't already have one. A mom is going viral on TikTok after her daughter accidentally broadcasted her live on Instagram while she was in the shower. This is my worst nightmare. By yeah, the way. this is terrifying. The mom, Brianna, she says her three year old came into the bathroom while she was showering and asked for help with her cell phone. Yeah. And when Brianna went to go look at the phone, she saw that it was live streaming. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. The mom is actually 38 <laughs> weeks pregnant with her third child right now. She's just thankful that she doesn't have a big following because um, hopefully too many people weren't watching. But with live streams, do they? I'm not sure because I've never done those on Instagram. Do those go away? I, I don't know, but. And you can delete them, I'm you sure. You and I both have young children. Yes. Um, my three-year-old knows how to unlock my phone. Oh, really? He actually took the phone one time, pulled it to my face over so the face ID. He's three. Um, he knows so how to scary. get into YouTube to watch his bath songs. He calls them bath songs, like nursery songs. Yeah. But he's been on Instagram before. I've caught him on there. So the, no I, this way. relates to me. Like, I'm really scared. So I actually locked the bathroom doors. <laughs> you, yeah, you need to make sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's unbelievable um, how good they are at technology. These little, it's crazy. These, these little ones, I mean, it's just so natural to them to just pick up a phone yeah. and they figure it out. Yeah. And, you know, here we are in the dinosaur ages yeah. trying to figure out updates. And they're logging into Instagram. He calls it the gram. The gram. He goes, I want to see gram. Three I want to see old. gram. Three. I know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we have to go. Yeah, we, we do. It. All right. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you tomorrow.